Hi right, guys, welcome to Let's Go Fishing. We are fishing Olifant Snack Dam just outside of Rustenburg today. Quite close to my house um, and I decided to fish this dam because it's quite difficult at this time of the year. We're in, in August, mid-August now. And it's that time of the year where the fishing can be either very good or very bad. So I'm taking on the challenge here today. Um, although this is just about 20 kilometers from my house, I don't pre-feed, I rock up here like you rock up when you go to a venue and that's the challenge for me, just to catch a couple of fish. So if we catch something today, it'll be good, otherwise we're going to do um, part of a casting session today as well for you. There's a lot of people asking us, um, how do you cast, how do you make it look so easy? Um, Practice makes perfect, that's the short and the sweet of it, but we're going to do part of that today. To start off, a uh, Facebook question on our um, Let's Go Fishing um, Facebook page. There's people that asked me, please show us how do you measure out um, a distance when you fish. So what I've done, um, I've got measuring sticks in the ground already. So and between my measuring sticks there's a piece of rope five meters long. So every wrap that I go from one peg to the, to the next is five meters so if you can count in fives you can measure out but i'm going to take you step by step through it to show you how it works all right so i'm going to measure out so i've done a bit of homework one of my friends fished here recently and he told me that he fished on one rod on 115 meters so i'm going to measure this rod out on 115 meters i've got a big weight on as you can see there keep the line stationary so i'm going to drop this lead on my right hand measuring peg so and i always start on the right hand side so if i get distracted i know more or less um where to count from that that will be odds um this will be ends so that's zero and now we're gonna I, i'm just opening up the bail arm here just open, open up the bail arm and then just squeeze the line tightly with your um, index finger and your, and your thumb and it's simple, you go around and you count 5 and around 10, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, and 115. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, just under the line clip, pull it up a bit, and then the big secret of measuring out is to wind it back, but you have to give it proper tension. So I'll pinch the rod between my knees with my index finger and thumb. I'll hold on to the line and just wind up tightly it's as easy as that if it burns a bit um, you can use a, a, a cloth a wet cloth but you have to wind it up tightly otherwise you're going to throw out bunches yeah And there we go, that's 115 meters measured out. As easy as that and as quick as that. been quite a while since I've last fished here. Um, at one stage we were fishing Willy Fontenac on a regular basis and <clears throat> but the dam has gone off and it's fishing a bit difficult like I said in the beginning and <clears throat> the messages that has come through on social media is that there's a 
a lot of fish being caught on hard floats. So I chose to fish one of my new floats, a Banlik float, Banlik hard float. It's something brand new in the signature series. But what I'm going to do on the top hook, I'm just going to put a just a float, no packing behind it. And on the bottom hook, I'm going to put the custard bullet just behind it. Let me bait it up and I'll show you how, how I'm going to throw it in. So I just pinched off a, uh, a small piece of the bullet and I dabbed it into a bit of water just to soften it up a bit um, because in winter with cold water ideally you want a soft bait and then another piece of the bullet I'm just going to put on the shaft line here that's going to prevent that top float from going up too far especially when you throw it and when it sinks through the water column. I'm going to push the both baits back into the millibomb, just like that. I'm using the round part of the hook to push it in, like that. And the same one in the front here. I'm just going to press on the floater like that. And now it's mooty time. What shall we do? Turbo garlic. Turbo garlic, not too much, sometimes less is more. Just paste it a bit, and then with the turbo garlic, I'm going to do a little bit of Kiana. Where is my Kiana? There's my Kiana. Just a little bit of Kiana. I'm just going to, just one proper drop, just paste it like that, and that's how it's going to go into the water. Let's get it in. Right, this is my 115 meter rod. Let's get it out. on the clip. There we go. Baiting up my second rod, I'm going to fish um, on the one hook, I'm going to fish the SWG float, that sweet white garlic float, <clears throat> simply the strongest, sweetest garlic float on the market out there, and then the other one, the DKW float, which is a, um, a sweet honey float. Top hook, bottom hook, doesn't matter where it goes, um, I'm going to push them back into the bomb. When I fish the, the softer floats, especially on days when you know it's going to lay a bit longer so I like to hook them a little bit more center and I push it right through on the back of the hook and then what I'm doing is I'm taking the round part of the hook pushing it into the bomb like that not too deep fish has to get it out easily and then with the SWG float I'm going to do exactly the same just uh, just push it in like that. There we go. Easy as pie. I'm going to fish one of my new dips on here as well. Chin Chong Cha. Nice, strong, spicy cinnamon. It's been giving a lot of fish at, at Olifant Snack among the social anglers. And I'm going to fish chop chop with that. The one, the only chop chop. If you fish any other chop chop, it's not the real McCoy. It's not the real thing. That is chop chop. All right, let's get it in. 
Okay, this rod is on, a, on an open spool. Um, so I'm going to throw this a bit further. There is noise of fish coming out a bit further. So M1 weight with a millibomb. I'm just going to give it a lack of whack and see where it falls. Let's go for it. Fly, my little one, fly. Got a bite on our deeper rod. Boom chakalaka. Ooh, the soft float. <laughs> My money is on the on that DKW float. I've got a friend that fishes this dam very often. Tina Staliart. Thank you, Tinas, for the tip on the DKW float. I must say, I didn't expect for the deeper rod to go first. There's some people fishing on our left hand side. And they've caught a fish as we were setting up and when he threw his rod back out, it wasn't that far. First fish on. Not that difficult then. <laughs> the combination flavor on the millibomb here is a ching chong cha and chop chop. Now, when I made the ching chong cha, it was... It was a difficult decision for me. Um, I don't want to put just another cinnamon onto the market and I searched for the flavor and eventually when I found the right flavor I just knew this one is going to be it and it's grown on me um, there's a lot of people that has caught fish with it in the testing phases um, and it works well for, for specimen fishing as well especially when you dip your tiger nuts into it and you let it dry on a bit it's got the same base that paint has, but with a very pungent and sweet cinnamon flavor. It smells like pancakes. So, and it gets my taste buds going when I smell that. This fish is coming in quite quickly. I'm going to go forward, go get it. This water is freaking cold. It's hot outside, but inside the water it's cold. Gold. Yo, 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 yo. Come, 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 on that DKW float with the ching chong cha and the chop chop on the millibomb. If you come to Willyfond Snack, make sure you've got it. All the locals are using it. It's working for them. This time it's working for me. Let me get this fish back. See if we can get another one. All right, my right hand rod, the deeper rod's ready to go back out again. Same two floats, DKW, that honey oozing float, and then the SWG, that strong garlic oozing float. On the bomb, the orange is that ching chong cha, and the yellow is the one and only chop chop. That fish um, picked up on the DKW float, so I'm putting it straight back. That float is, I personally think, one of the most underrated soft oozing floats in our South African market. It's something that whenever I battle, I just go to that. I've got so much confidence. I can put it in, I can let it lay, and I know the fish is not gonna swim by. It will pick it up. Let me get it in, see if we can get another one. Let's see. There we go.
We've got a very subtle bite here on the right hand rod. Just pushing it back a little bit. Come on, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Yeah, 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 you can do it. Is it there? Isn't it there? Oh man, what's happening now? Let's pick it up. Let's see if it's there. Sometimes when you leave it too long, you give it the opportunity to swim into a snag. As long as there's positive movement on a policeman, you can pick up the rod. And a lot of people struggle with it. But that was, it, it was positive, it did this the whole time, so it means that fish is trying to shake the hook. And if you leave it too long, it's either going to go into a snack or it's going to eject that hook. So fish on, doesn't feel like a big one. Same thing again, ching chong cha, chop chop. Banley guard floats, oh no, no, not the Banley guard floats, the DKW and the SWG float. Keeps on working. Oh, let me go get it. She's small. Big or small? We oui. Catch him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And this was the top hook again. Again on that TKW float. Ooh, hot up, hot up, hot up. And that's why we do it over the water. <laughs> nice healthy little copy. Olifant's neck magic. Not big, but like I said, we don't pre-feed. We rock up like you do, and we just fish. This deep rod is fast and furious. Ooh. Some, the wind picked up. There's some algae on the line. Ooh, I have to clean it now. Look at this. Can me show you a quick way how to clean this. Just keep your line tight on the other end. I'll take the policeman off. Oh, the policeman just took it off, but there's another piece here. So, don't wind this up on your, um, on the top, tip of your rod. Just double up your line like that and just let the line cut through it. It's so easy to clean it off, but if you, if you let it accumulate on the tip of your rod, it becomes super tangy very, very quickly. There's another piece on my, the tip of my rod now. Two pieces, yeah. And this is what we call winter salt. Just double it up, pull it off. It's really soft, but as soon as it bunches up on, on the rod tip, it becomes as strong as a flippant spider wire. And then that's a problem. Then it's difficult to get it off. Feels like another smallish fish. But on a day like today, man, big or small, we catch them all. <laughs> Top hook again. That DKW float is really doing the business. Look at the condition of this little fish. Fat, nice and broad over the back. What a little fish. 
Thank you, fellow. The deeper rod is really doing the damage now. And just a recap on, on what we've got on here. The DKW float, that's the yellow one. That nice spicy sweet honey. And then the SWG float, that's the white one. The orange is the um, Ching Chong Cha, that nice cinnamon. And then the one and only Chop Chop. So I've been throwing this a bit further. Um, I reckon about 125 to 130 meters. And this, the previous fish wasn't in the water, the, the rod wasn't in the water, it's too long and it, it took. So I'm just going to see if I can maybe get it a little bit further, see if we can catch something a bit bigger. And let's go for it. Ooh, lovely. We've got a bite here. It's holding it tight. Can't run with it. Let's see what we have here. Boom, chakalaka. On dead. Oh yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, this feels better. But I'm not going to jinx it. I must say, I unclipped a 115 meter rod and went a bit further with that and it's instant 25 minutes fish on when you fish olifant's neck just make sure that you get the right distance if you if you do what we do throw a bit further especially this time of the year you're definitely going to catch some fish in summertime the fish are much shallower but what happens in summertime there's a gazillion gilaminkis in this, this dam and people fish shallow and they they get a quick talk or two on the policeman and they leave it and those kilominkis has destroyed your bait so what we tend to do in summertime i fish a lot of millipips and then that turbo garlic millipip comes into its own and it's but still then you need to fish that 85 to 90 meters if you fish that distance you're definitely going to catch a lot of fish there is a lot of good fish to catch it's um, good for barbel there's some nice kerpa in the dam as well from time to time we get we get proper kerpa but it's more a february march thing when when they come in on onto the bite but it's a nice place just do what we did and you'll definitely catch some fish at the end of this program we'll put some combinations on that you can use here at olifant snack this fish is coming in quickly let me go get it That's a step in the right direction. A bit better. I changed this rod to that Ching Chong Cha and the Chop Chop again. Same float, that garlic oozing float, the SWG, and then um, the DKW float on the other hook. And picked up on the DKW again. But as soon as I take that SWG float away, it seems like it lays a bit longer. I'm getting this one back, and then we're gonna move on and do some casting tips and tricks with you let's get it back casting is one of those things that if you can do it you can fish and if you can't do it you're always going to battle to fish um, but it's 
also something that you can learn how to do it. Nobody was born with a rod in the hand and it is an ability that you can go and practice and the more you practice the better you'll get at it. So there's a couple of pointers that I want to give you guys on um, how to improve your casting. Pretty soon we'll have an entire um, show out just to improve your casting but let's start at the beginning. So a lot of people struggle to cast because they simply haven't got a consistent drop and the drop means the length from your um, rod tip to your milli bomb. So what we do is we always use the, um, the half a length of, of the rod. So the softer the rod, the, the shorter your drop's going to be. So I'm fishing a 12 foot 6 parabolic action rod and I found um, when I have it just above the bottom eye of, of the rod, there I get the maximum power out of my rod, um, the specific rod that, that I use. A lot of people use longer drops, especially with the stiffer rods, and that works very well for them. Second thing is hand position on the, on the rod at the back. A lot of people will grab the rod and they'll grab it with their fingertips. You can never um, put power onto the rod. They'll grab the rod like that. No, that's wrong. So what you need to do is grab the rod and basically um, take the rod. You must, if somebody wants to take this rod out of your hand, it must be impossible for them. From there, um, the stem of the, the reel must be between your ring finger and your middle finger and you must grab around the rod like that. Thumb on top of the rod is a big big no-no. Don't do that because you can't open this finger without taking pressure off this thumb. Alright so from here grab the rod like that just extend your your, your index finger. Um, you can see I put it quite far in. This will never cut your, 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 your finger if your, your reel is um, is totally fuss. Alright, so open your bail arm, don't um, press this finger against the rod, that's also a big no-no because you can't open from there without taking pressure off your hand. But from here you can close your hand and you can you can just open your finger and let the line go. So basics, my, my drop is right, Grab the rod like that, um, put it quite far in. With this, you're going to control your cast. Um, don't put it on the tip like, like most people do. Um, if you do it like that, um, I control my cast. If I, if I want to do a, a flat cast, I'll just do that. I'll pull it a bit more in. I'm going to delay my release. Otherwise, a normal cast, that's where my finger is going to be. As easy as that. Second thing is, use the butt of the rod all right use the, the the butt length your power hand is your left hand your directional hand is your right hand all right so if i want to give somebody direction i just slap them with the right hand so remember it like that um you're going to generate power um leverage power on your on your left hand and your right hand is your directional hand so i'm going to do a cast talk you through the cast um and just show you the basics of a proper proper bank angling cast let's do it when i come around with it i'm just going to make sure that my right hand ends up on that mark all right look where it is slowly backwards generate the power with my left hand there we go We've got a bite on this rod. <laughs> Let's catch it. It's a back bite, so what do you do with the back bite? You just wind until you feel it tighten up and then just lay into it. But be ready for that fish when it wants to go in the other direction. You must be ready for it. We've got some muck on the line again. <laughs> I almost ate that. Let's just clean it off. Come on. 
Yeah, I'll be with you now. Take the policeman off. Here we go. If you, if this is the first time that you see our program, please um, like and subscribe. If you hit that um, subscribe button on YouTube, you will be notified every time when a new program drops. And if you hit the notification bell, it's going to be um, way easier to know when, when it happens. And please tell your friends and, and family about our program. We do it like you do it. We don't pre-feed. And when we do, we'll tell you that we, that we put some f um, feed into the water. But otherwise, we try to keep it real. We don't always catch the big fish, but we, we always catch a couple of fish. And we just want to teach you how to do it and show you how we do it. We make it easy, and like I said, we keep it real. This fish is just here. I'm going to go get it. And remember to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button. Come fishy fishy. Not a big one. But a result. Come, 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 come. Here we go. Hey. Loosen itself. Again, that DKW float. I think that's the bait of the day. With the ching chong cha and the chop chop on the milli bomb. Man, what a combo. And Olifant's neck is never going to be the same. Hey! Wants to bite me. thanks for watching our program it's been a blast here at Olifant's neck a proper blast we had a windstorm morning and when it came up it came up properly this is the August winds blowing normally good sign for us the season is on its way now on the go um, if you want to visit Olifant's neck um, just make sure you do what we do or what what we did and you'll definitely catch a couple of fish remember to in the summertime bring your bubble weights with um, some snake worms, a couple of flying ants, that also works well. There's a lot of guillaminkis here, you can use some of them for hook baits as well, for, especially for the barbel. And remember to tell your friends and family about our program. Like and subscribe if you haven't done it. We'll see you next time. We're going to play out with um, the combinations that works here. So if you want to come here, this you can bring along as well.